Hello guys, welcome to episode 10, I think. Yeah, episode 10 of making an online Pokemon game in Game Maker Studio 2. Uh, now, what I said last time was we are going to fix the updating function, or the, not the updating function, the movement function, so that it basically is better in sync with the server, I suppose is the way to put it. Because if we look right now, so if I hold it down, Everything is continuous, but if I release any of the keys, uh, it's hard to see because you're not, you can't see what I'm pressing, but if I release a key, I continuously move. I move until the server updated. Like, here, I'll, tr I'll do a test. Um, so, right now I'm holding the right key, and then right now I let go, and I move on for like this whole distance because the uh, client is the server thinks my position is over here when I release the key over here. So the server says I'm over here and the client thinks it's over here. So it still has to do all that movement. Now, unfortunately, I didn't realize how easy this was going to be because I thought about it. And I was like, wait, this is really easy. Um, we'll do this in a few minutes. Uh, so we're going to do this in a few minutes, like I said, um, and we only need to deal with the player data. And so this video, after that, I'm going to just work on a little bit more debugging stuff because I've been meaning to do that. But this should be the last video for movement in a while. So here's what I'm going to do. In the player data where we update the client, we are updating the position right here. I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to put this in its own function. So we'll say update position and it's going to be a function. And I'll just paste all of that right back in here. So that way we can call it right here in the update function, update position. And we're going to call this, oh, scroll down, when we update the server as well. So the server will also be now keeping track of its real world position. And we're going to stop using this timer basically. So what we're going to do is, if we scroll back up to where we have this update position, right here, I'm going to return false. And down here, I'm going to return true. So what this is going to return basically is, am I in position? Am I in the cell yet? So instead of dealing with the timer and all that, we're going to say, has this position reached the cell, the intended cell? And we're only going to allow movement if we have. Um, I'm also going to take this speed and multiply it by 2 when I check it. So it'll be a little bit more of a gap. The reason is I tested this beforehand. And um, if you don't include that, there's a little tiny frame where you will stop for a second. It's just really annoying to look at. So, um, you know, maybe I can try multiplying by 1.5. Maybe that'll look better. We'll see. If not, we can always increase it. Um, so there we go. Now we're updating this physical position in the client and the server and returning true or false depending on if it's in position. Now if I scroll up, I can take this move time and move max time and just remove them. We don't need them anymore. So if we scroll down to update server now, uh, I said we don't need them, but then what are we going to do here? Well, when we update the position, we're going to call or create a variable called var in position in position pos is equal to update position because this returns true or false if it's inside the cell and we're only going to allow movement if we're in position and then i can remove this move time equals max time and move time decrement and that's it i think um if i have everything correct uh the movement should be all synced up properly and if i execute two programs here and I run them. If I hold it down, it looks fine. And if I release the keyboard, uh, it stops right in the cell that it was intended to. I do move a little further, but that's because it needs to move to at least get to the next cell. But I mean, I'm not like jumping massive distances. So I will stop at the next intended cell, which is exactly what you want. And if I hold it down, uh, looks like 1.5 is fine. Ooh, that looked a little bad though. Um, but that might be diagonal movement again, which we do need to get rid of. Um, 
I could move diagonal movement right now, I suppose. Because diagonal movement is something that won't be in the final game. Um, I could... So how am I going to do this? Um, let's see. I will say if delta x doesn't equal 0, put this in brackets and say and delta y does equal 0. And here I'll do the same thing and delta x does equal 0. But this means that if I'm holding diagonally, I will only move in one direction. So we don't want that. So I'm going to undo all that actually. What we really want is it to prioritize whatever you pressed first. Um, which sounds like a lot more work than I want to deal with right now anyway. So we'll just leave it. Uh, we could do that, but that would mean that if you hold both left and, like if you hold the right and down keys, it will only update one of them. It won't up, it won't let you move at all basically, which I don't think we want. Um, so we'll deal with that another time, I suppose. For now, like I said, I want to get to some more debugging stuff. In particular, I want to allow for uh, console commands. So what do I mean by that? So if I press F5 and run the server, and I run the client, if you remember, if I press F1, we can open up the console up here, and it'll display all the messages that we send out. And we can toggle that on and off. But what I would like to add is what you see in some games, which is a little bar at the bottom where we can type in messages. I might be a little weird because other movements might be working. Um, so for now, yeah, that should be fine. Um, now how I want to do this, I'm going to do Alt C and we'll just create a script called console. This will be a singleton. I like my singletons, I know. And um, get a macro called console. It's equal to get console. We need to create that function, get console, and then we will need a static C equals a new console, and then we can return that console, return C. And I spelled everything right, it appears, so there we go. All right, so how do we want to do this? First of all, the de in the bug, we want to draw that out. So, how do we draw it out? Well, we'll need to increase the size of the surface. So for that, under if we scroll down to draw logs here, um, where do we set the size here? Uh, right here, we set the height to be this. So I'm going to add in size. Well, no, we don't want to add in size. How do we do this? It's this size, right? Um, how is this going to work? Um, I guess under the surface create, we'll add it here. So when we say surface equals surface create, we'll just add in the size and that'll extend the surface to be bigger. But that also means that under, where are we? Under here where we set delta y equal to height, we need to subtract that size. And instead of size, maybe we should get the console to define its own size. So we'll set its size equal to 24, I suppose. Some We'll do it a pixel amount instead of an absolute relative for now. So instead of size here, we'll say console.size now. And we need to do the same thing here when we say delta y is height minus console.size. And then under the console, I'm going to need a function for rendering out the console. And by the console, I just mean that little bar at the very bottom that draws the text. So I will create a function called render equals a function. And we'll provide a x and a y position to draw it at. And we'll also provide a width and a height to draw to. And that will be provided by, provided by the debugger. So for now, let's just draw a white box or a some colored box. So draw rectangle 
at delta x, delta y, um, and we'll do, maybe we should provide x, x positions, x1, x, y, x1, y1, x2, y2. So we'll provide those positions instead, and we'll send them directly through, and outline is false, and we'll make it for now uh, red, just so we can see it. Now under the debugger, we at some point need to render it out. So how do we render this out? Um, we can render it, we're gonna render it under the surface still, so I'm gonna say console.render, and now we need to provide those positions. X1 is just zero, because remember we're in the surface right now, so we need to do it based on the surface positions. Uh, Y1 is height minus console dot size, so basically this position here. X2 is the width of the whole thing, which is just width, they believe, and Y2 is just the height. So that should be everything we need in the debugger. If I run this, and I also just realized it's happening in the client too, or the server too, which could be fine actually. We might be able to leave that. Um, I wasn't planning to, but it should be fine. Um, it appears either the height is wrong or no. What's going on is, yeah, height is kind of wrong. Um, the height is different. The height is actually the um, max y position. So actually here when we say delta y equals height minus the console size, that can go away actually because height isn't the height of the surface. So here, so we remove delta y and we remove the console.size in the delta y and in the render, instead of subtracting console size here, we're actually going to add it here. So that should make it better. Um, I don't know how the server side is being weird, but we won't worry about the server for now. Right now we just care about the client anyway. But there we go. Now it is rendering at the very bottom instead of the um, slightly higher. So now that that's working, um, let's go to the console and we'll actually do some stuff with it. For one, I'm going to increase the size to 48 because that was a little small. Uh, we can change this to be a different color. We'll just set it to see white. Instead of a rectangle, we're going to draw a line. So draw a line from x1, y1, x2, and not y2, but y1. The reason being is that we're just drawing a line directly above the bar. And now we need to draw some text, which means we're going to have to store some text. So in the console, we can create a variable called uh, current text equals blank. Um, I'm also going to have a variable called active equals false. You'll see why in a minute here because we kind of want to disable any other keyboard functionality while this is active. Um, so I will do that and actually, yeah, we'll do that. And then here I will say um, if, and I will actually leave it for now. For now, we're just going to draw the text. So I need to say draw render text. I think that's what we named it. Remember, we had that one utility function. We made this like episode two. There's this render text function that we made. Uh, we'll use that again. So this is going to be at the position x1, y1. The text is going to be whatever our current text is. And we'll make this camel case. Current text. The height is just y2 minus y1 which did not need to be in brackets actually. Um, and yeah, let's set this to some text like hello world and we'll see how this works. If I execute this on the client now and we run F1, they see the words hello world. 48 might've been a little big, but that's fine for now. Hopefully it's fine that you can see it. That's all that really matters. Um, we can make a padding as well equals 12 that way we can come into here instead of rendering at x1 we'll say x1 plus padding so that it's not butt up against the uh window 
Um, for the height, actually, I kind of want to reduce the size by multiplying it by 3 fourths. So we take the height, multiply by 3 fourths, and that'll just, again, do basically the same thing. Create a sort of a padding, but it's only at the bottom. Um, and in fact, I can take the Y1 and add padding as well. This is kind of a weird way to do it, but I mean, if it works, it works. So yeah, that's good enough for now. Um, but we need to actually make some text. So let's make that blank. And uh, for this current text, I'm actually going to uh, pick, put this in a variable var t equals current text. And then here, I'm actually going to do a, what is that, a less than, or a greater than sign, space, and then add t. That way, um, we have this kind of arrow thing pointing to it. It'll make it look a little better, I think. So now, um, we need to check if active. Then we need to, um... Let me see. So if we're active, we need to start modifying it. So how do we modify it? Uh, we're going to say text equals um, current text equals uh, keyboard string, I believe is the variable that we want. So we're going to set the current text equal to the keyboard string. So if we type, then it's going to be set there. And then I need to do a few other things. I'm going to take this and this var t and the render text and move it down. Well, actually, no. The var t can stay up there, and the render text is going to go down there. And that way, I can say in the if active, we'll say t plus equals, and I'm going to add in just the bar, which means that if it's active, we'll see a little line so that we can kind of tell that we're trying to type right now. Uh, we could make it flicker if we want to, but for now, this is fine. Um, I know this is a little weird, but yeah, so we're drawing the line at the very top of this bar, and then we're storing the current text in a variable. If this is active, we're going to set the current text to the keyboard string and then add in a bar at the end of the text, and then we actually render the text. So what do we do with all this? Um, we should probably speed it up a little bit. We're getting to 17 minute mark. So what we really want to do with this is, first off, we need to actually set this to active, but then when we press enter, if we're active, then we need to do something with that code, with whatever we typed in. So to start off, let's see here. I need to find a way to set this to active, and when do we want this to become active? We could do it whenever we press F1, and just have that be when it's active, or I can make it so that when we click on the actual thing that's what happens and I'm gonna go with just whenever the console is open it's active so I will create a function called set active equal to function and I will come into here and we should say active or just act that way I can say active equals act and that should be fine um, I'm gonna do a few more things here so Actually, we'll call it toggle active. Yeah, toggle active. And then we'll just say active equals not active. Now, why would I do this? Well, if you remember under the object network controller, this is where we kind of deal with that under the draw event, maybe? Where do we deal with this? The draw GUI event. Yep, right here. We say if keyboard check pressed, VKF1 show logs. Instead, I'm going to say console.toggle active. I'm going to get rid of the show logs here. And I'm going to instead replace this if show logs with console.active. And in the create event, I can remove this show logs variable as well. But now, instead of storing it within the object network controller, we're storing it in the console itself. Now, if I come back to the console, um, I'm going to say if active, so we just set this to active, I'm going to say keyboard, keyboard string 
equals current text. So basically the reverse of this. So once we first open up the console, we're essentially resetting the entire message. And then if we are not, um, if it's already active, then we are going to do this. We're going to set the text to be the keyboard string. And now we need to disable movement if we are active. Uh, this is just temporary. We could leave it. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, in fact, yeah, let's just leave it now. Um, so we run this and... Ooh, that's fun. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's the issue with the server side instead of the client side. So what I can do here... So right now I'm saying if client if is client we're setting show logs to true which is funny um, so if we're the server we're setting show logs to true what I should be doing is saying console dot uh, active equals true instead and here under the if keyboard check f1 we should say and is client because we don't want to have allow for toggling on the server. Um, but here now I have an issue converting a string to a float under well, I wonder why that's going on um, line 21 so let me go into the console so right here when I say t plus equals this I'm guessing it just doesn't like how I'm doing that so instead I'm going to say t equals current text plus that because current text should be a value, not an integer at any point, as far as I'm aware. Yep, that should be fine. Let's run this again. Nope, still broken. Um, string to float. It thinks it's trying to convert this to a float, even though this is not a float. And it works everywhere else. So let me try commenting this out for a second and running it again. Okay, there we go. So keyboard, oh, you know what? Keyboard key should be keyboard string. Don't make that mistake. Run it again, should be good. Come in the, to the AV testing and run the client. And now I should be able to be, everything should be working fine. But if I press F1, you'll see we have this running and I can say, um, hello world and you'll see I move kind of when I type um, but that should be fine so I can type in commands now so I can say something along the lines of run some function and if I press enter normally something should happen but right now it is not so I can press F1 again and if I move around and press a bunch of keys and I press F1 again it didn't modify the console because it wasn't active and it did save whatever I was last typing so it's looking good so far, but now we just need to make it so we can actually run a command. So I'm going to create another new script here called run console command. And in here, I am going to take it and I'm going to say parts, or actually we'll call it arguments, so args. So these are all the arguments. And under the console, whenever I press enter, so if active, and then I'm gonna say if keyboard check, press BK, enter. So if we press the enter key, I am going to first say uh, current text equals blank and keyboard string equals blank. And before that though, I need to run console command and I need to run it on the arguments. So this needs to be an array of different arguments, um, but for now, I don't have an array, so we need to split it. So I would say var parts equals string split. And what does this take in? I haven't run this in a while. Um, we'll say current text, delimiter is a space, and remove empty, we'll set the true, and no max split. So that should be fine if we run Pass in parts. I still remember the days when I had to write a string splitter myself, so it's nice that they have this built in now. Anyway, um, that should be good. 
into here, I can say if args dot length less than oh array length args less than less than or equal to zero. Um, I then we'll just return because there's no function in there. We'll do a switch statement on args zero, and the default I will say break, and here I'm going to say uh, console dot error no command found, um, and I'm going to say args zero. And that should be fine. We don't need to convert that to a string because it's already a string. So now if I try to type anything in, um, in my commands, execute a player, let's run some command, hello world, and I press enter, we get a nice little error, which is exactly what we didn't want to see. Um, not set before reading it, dot error. That's because it shouldn't be console.error, but debug.error. Now if I run it, come to here, um, hello world, press enter, no command found, hello. Alright, and another thing I want to do is I want to say args 0 equals string lowercase, yep, string lower args 0. So arguments shouldn't be case sensitive, at least the first argument shouldn't be. So how do we write a command now? Um, we're getting to the end here. So the way you do it is you will come into here. If you want to write your own command, you'll do case. The command name will say print. And it needs to be in lowercase because uh, we're setting it to lowercase. Um, so let's say print. And all I have to do here is deep if, ooh. So I can do debug dot log args1 and that should actually just be fine but I'll show you what happens if I don't um, I'll show you what happens in a second here so if I press F1 come to here there's two bugs we need to fix first of all if I type in print hello world it just prints out the word hello it doesn't print out hello world also if I just press print with no arguments will crash that's the second bug we need to fix. So the first thing I need to fix is the, um, we'll fix the breaking first. So we'll create another function down here, I guess. Well, we could do it inline inside a function, but I'm not gonna get that fancy. So function test, we'll call it test arguments. Yeah, test argument, argument count, we'll pass in the args and the count And we'll say if array length of args, come back here. If array length args is less than count, then I'm going to do a debug dot error. Um, and this is just going to say argument count for plus args zero, invalid, expected, plus we'll count, um, do count, and this needs to be a string, string, count, and we'll say got plus string argument, or array length of args. And I think that's enough braces. Nope, one too many. All right, so, that should, oh, we're missing something. Oh, that should, there should be a plus there. All right, so, let's break this into a few lines. Um, this needs a plus, and this needs a plus. We'll get rid of this plus. All right, so we're saying the argument count for whatever the uh, command was, um, invalid, expected, how many we expected, and we got however many we got, and this is now an error because I did have the correct amount of braces at first. Anyway, here I'm going to say return um, false or return true, else we'll return false. 
so that way in here I can come into the print and I can say if verify or what do we call it test argument count um, and that is of test argument count of args and we're expecting at least two arguments I'm going to return so there we go now if I run this we should fix that but we didn't because somewhere we have another error uh, right here we need another brace or not no we need one less brace here now if I run this and I run the client and I just type in print this is the wrong amount of arguments because it expects another argument but if I press enter it'll say argument count for print invalid expected to got one so a little bit of debugging there which is nice um, I can print hello instead and it'll print the message hello print testing one two three print and now I need to fix it so that I can say print what's up world and it won't just print out what's so how do we do that um, what answer is I'm not totally sure but hopefully we can figure this out so if we go to the console when we split the string we need to stop it from splitting on uh, quotations which maybe we can do that with ext I'm not totally sure De limiter array remove empty no this looks like it just removes it on a specialized delimiter if I go to the manual for it um, the limiter array contains all possible string splits split I'm just checking something maybe we should change the delimiter type to be like uh, something else so like a comma or something that way we could keep it but then if we need a comma in the string we'll have issues um, so it depends on how we want to do this because um, unfortunately it does not appear there's a way to exclude separate uh, exclude things in quotations so instead what I'll do is I'll just do a comma We'll make the delimiter a comma instead of a space and that'll be the solution and then if I run this again with the client I can say print and now I need a comma hello world how are you and it broke um spring string oh you know what yeah because we're doing ext we don't want ext we just want string split so let's run this again f1 print hello world how are you if I print that no command found print yep because we didn't provide a comma print comma hello world how are you press enter and now it prints hello world how are you so now we can do commands with multiple lines so you might be asking what's the point of all this well the point is we can make our own commands now besides just print I can do one even fancier um, which I will be dealing with next time but it's gonna be a good a good one I promise we're going to basically be writing a command that lets us by hand send data straight from the client to the server and to see why that's important later it's going to help us a lot with not only debugging and testing but it's also going to help us a lot with um, what's it called with uh, performance and trying to stop hackers from doing things that they shouldn't be. Anyway, until then, I will see you guys later.